Hello, everyone. My name is Kathy Coppola. I'm the executive director at NAMI Miami-Dade County, and I'm so glad you're here with us today um, for the prescription for happiness. So I'm going to introduce um, our speaker, and that's Patricia Aris Romero, uh, Dr. Patricia Aris Romero. She's the um, chief medical officer at Jackson Behavioral Health Hospital. She is double board certified, a diplomat of the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology, and a diplomat of American Board of Preventative Medicine as a specialist in addiction medicine. She also serves as associate professor for the University of Miami School of Medicine for both the Department of Psychiatry and Department of Anesthesiology Pain Medicine Fellowship. And of course, she's a board member of NAMI Miami. So thank you, um, Dr. Patty, for yes. being here with us today. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited um, because, you know, I have all these, you know, hats that I, that I wear, but, you know, one of the most important ones I think I wear is, is being a board member of this wonderful organization, NAMI, um, that does such wonderful work for our community. And um, so just remember to donate, please, if you haven't done so already. Um, and, um, and, you know, thank you for your generosity ahead of time. So, I wanted to get started today and, and just talk about and really have a light conversation, right? Um, of talking about, you know, what are the scientific things that have been proven that really help us to be, make us happier, right? And in reality, you know, everybody has a different idea of what makes us happy, right? So, um, you know, for some people, it might be simple things, other people might be material things, but in reality, it's really about coming from, from within and from inside. Um, and then these are just kind of boosters, right? That just help us kind of bring a smile to our face um, on those days that are not so happy. Um, and, and one thing that we know for sure is that we can all use a little bit of happiness um, during these days. Um, we've been dealing with so much stress, right? So, you know, COVID, now we're going into nine months, um, has been stressful for all of us, you know, with the physical distancing, not being able to, to socialize and just do things that are, are normal for us to be in society and, and to, to really, you know, have these relationships that we're used to having, you know, even for us at the board, you know, we haven't been able to see each other this whole time. And then you, you throw that the election, right? All the stress that we've had in this community with all the elections and, and, and the things going back and forth, which I won't get into, of course not. And then, you know, the racial, you know, inequalities that we've been seeing, you know, in our country. So you throw all that together in nine months and, you know, we have a lot of reasons to try to make our lives a little bit happier. So hopefully this will help you to feel happier, um, you know, now moving forward. So number one, the one no one ever wants to hear about is exercise. So exercise is so important. I know we hate it. We think it's such a task, but it really is good. And it's not about doing anything fancy or, you know, signing up to a gym or having to take, you know, expensive classes. It's just about moving our bodies. And so you know, we want to increase those endorphins that really make us feel good and improve our mood. And that could be anything, you know, the recommendation, let's be honest, is 20 to 30 minutes a day. And it's just about moving. So going for a brisk walk or just walking outside makes a difference in our emotional well-being. So just think about it. Make, it, make that a plan for yourself. Just 20 minutes out of your life every day to just go for a walk. Right? Cause, and especially now that we're not even leaving the house, some of us, right? So we're saying, you know, in front of the computer, sitting on a chair, you know, at least stand up and stretch and move around. Um, you know, make sure that you, you get that, that body moving. Sleep. Sleep is so important. So sleep is one of those things that really is just kind of like a vicious cycle, right? So if you feel bad, then you can't sleep well. And if you can't sleep well, then, you know, you don't feel good. Because all of us, whenever we wake up and we have a bad night's sleep, guess what? We're all grumpy and angry and uh, irritable, including myself. So things that we can do um, to improve our sleep are, you know, not even not eat a heavy meal at night. Because, you know, if you eat a heavy meal, not good, you're not going to be able to sleep well. Um, alcohol is not good. It might make us go to sleep, but it doesn't keep us asleep. So if you think that alcohol is helping you go to sleep, it really isn't. It just messes up your whole sleep architecture. Um, we want to make sure that we're, you know, producing enough melatonin. So all these devices that we have all around us with a blue light, guess what? It disrupts that whole circadian rhythm. So try to stop having those blue lights in front of you. So the cell phone or the tablet about two hours before bedtime. So those are just things that we can start implementing with good sleep hygiene, just to start getting our sleep better. Another thing that we can also do is make sure that our room is quiet, it's dark and it's at a comfortable temperature, ready for sleep. 
Um, soaking up sunlight. So this is another one that actually helps with the whole sleep pattern, right? Um, the vitamin D really improves our uh, natural mood. So going out in the morning um, has been shown that if you get that sunlight in the morning, it actually helps with your circadian rhythm. So your body now knows, hey, you know what? Melatonin needs to stop be being produced. I'm up and awake. And then now at nighttime, my melatonin again is gonna start pr producing. So not only does it help with sleep, it actually helps with your mood. And again, I'm not talking about soaking in the sun, you know, you have to put your sunblock and you, know, you shouldn't be doing it at noon, which is the worst time for the, you know, um, the rays of light, but early in the morning or late in the afternoon before the sun goes down is a great time to do that. Practicing mindfulness. Um, this is really big. And, and, you know, when I tell my patients about mindfulness, they're like, I'm not going to meditate. I'm not sitting on the floor cross-legged. Are you crazy? And it really isn't about that. Mindfulness is really about being present in the moment. And we can practice mindfulness in many ways that it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, becoming a yogi, right? And having to, you know, sit in all these, you know, bizarre positions. Um, mindfulness is about, you know, learning to really be in this moment. Because remember, if we're in the present moment, then we can't be anxious or we can't be depressed. Because it's only when we're worrying about the future and about what's going to happen tomorrow or what I have to get done that I cannot enjoy this moment. Or if I start thinking about the past, you know, I might start feeling guilty or ashamed because of something I did or because of some story I told myself that I did. So being in the present, and we can do that if you can even put that together with a whole walking thing, right? So when we walk, just really feeling your feet on the pavement, that's being mindful, right? Because when you walk, you don't even notice what you're doing, right? You're on your iPhone or you're doing this. No, no, it's about going for a walk and then listening for the birds or listening for the leaves, you know, looking for the colors in the sky, you know, maybe say, say to yourself, I'm going to look for everything yellow today and just being mindful of doing that. We can even be mindful when we eat, you know, take a grape. What's the texture? What does it feel like? How does it, you know, explode in my mouth? Those are ways that we can practice mindfulness. And so when we do this, we're releasing dopamine, we're releasing serotonin. These are all those neurochemicals that we need to help us feel better. So happiness happens. Um, gratitude. This is another one of my favorite, favorite, favorites. There's so much research on gratitude um, with um, longevity um, linked to multiple benefits, such as strength, strengthening your immune system. And who couldn't benefit from that right now, right? Um, it helps with sleep. It even improves our positivity and optimism. Um, so, you know, things like, you know, journaling are very good. Um, just being, um, showing some gratitude in the morning, just, you know, one thing that you're, you're grateful for. And even in those worst of days, right? Because we all have those gloomy days where we wake up and we're like, ah, I don't want to deal with it. Um, if you just say, you know, I'm grateful for one thing, for the fact that I was able to wake up today and I'm breathing. That's something to be grateful for. Or the fact that I'm able to get up and I'm able to walk and I'm able to, you know, make myself a breakfast because I have food in front of me. Learning to just have those small moments of gratitude increases your well being and your happiness. Family and friends, huge. Um, having social connections, and it could be, you know, family that are, you know, families, you know, that we make family, our friends, um, because it's about having that human touch, um, which now we're sadly unable to have, but having that connection. And actually there's some studies that they're doing right now out of Harvard, where they're looking at people making connection even virtually and seeing if they're, you're able to release the same oxytocin and serotonin. And, it's, and, and what it seems to be that the key is um, the actual connection that you're really present and that you're really connecting. So it's not us just talking and everybody being on the phone or, you know, or, or looking to see you know, who sent me an email. No, it's about really connecting because that's what it is at the end of the day. It's, it's you know, we're social beings and we constantly need each other um, to complete continue to support each other. Um, so that increases our, our level of oxytocin. And as a matter of fact, if you have a pet and you hug your pet and you play with your pet, same effect. So it's about our bonding, right? Our bonding, whether it's you know with our loved ones if we're able to do that, or if it's with our pets that we love so much. So it's connecting. And it always makes us feel good. I know my dog always makes me feel good. Um, listening to music, it's an automatic mood Booster. Can you believe that? 
it releases dopamine. So, and that's why, you know, when you hear a song that you, you know, maybe from, you know, when you were in high school or a song that reminds you, doesn't it make you feel good? All of a sudden, like your mood changes, right? Anything that, you know, whatever, call it whatever you like to listen to, you hear it on, you know, on the radio and you're like, wow. You know, I, I laugh because, um, you know, I, I got together for my mother's birthday with my brother um, and, and my two brothers actually. And so the Hamilton soundtrack, there's this one about, you know, the, the king and it's hysterical. And so every time I hear that song, I, I just, I get happy, you know, so I blast it and my kids start, you know, they, they think I'm crazy, but that's okay. Um, exploring new passions. This one's big. Um, so, you know, whenever you are exploring or learning, expanding your horizon, um, you know, you improve your mood. And it's also about finding meaning is another one that we can also talk about, right? So finding something meaningful in your life, you know, the reason why you wake up in the morning. Um, and this could be done, you know, by getting involved in your community or doing, a, you know, a do-it-yourself project. You know, I think, you know, we had so many people during, um, you know, um, the quarantine that were doing that. And, you know, how good did they feel, right? Because they got things accomplished. You know, I got home and my, my husband did a beach. And I was like, you need to go to work. <laughs> this is not going to work out if you keep doing stuff around the house, you know? Um, so, so things like that, you know, people were like remodeling, they were painting, you know, they were planting. Um, and, and, you know, why do you think people were doing that? because they wanted to make themselves feel better, wanted to control whatever it was in front of them that they can control. And so that's what it's about. Um, very important. Um, so um, loading up on green leafy vegetables. I'm sure you've heard this from your primary um, caregiver as well. I mean, your primary uh, physician. And so, cause it increases dopamine in our brain. So it's not only good for our health, but eating all these you know, leafy green vegetables are really great for us. Um, for our dopamine. And actually, you know, there's some studies that it helps with memory disorders, right? So cognitive disorders as well. So not only does it make us feel good, it's going to remember, make, you know, help us to remember that we feel good. So that's a good one. Um, and number 10 is smile. So studies have shown that even if you force a smile, it can activate happiness. Even if you don't want, think about that. So even if you don't want to smile, if you force a smile, it makes you feel better. And you know, it's true because when you laugh or when you smile, you can't be upset. Think about it. Have you been able to be upset ever in your life when you're smiling or laughing? You can't. And I know it's a fact because when my son gets upset about whatever it is that he's upset about, because he's a teenager, so everything makes him upset. Um, and of course, you know, I have to validate that because, you know, that's what I have to do. In my mind, I'm thinking, oh my God, kid, you have no idea how difficult life gets, you know? Um, so, I make a joke or I try to make him laugh. And of course he's laughing, but he, you know, he's trying to keep it together and like still pretend that he's upset about whatever it is that he's upset, but he can't, he can't hold it together because he's laughing. So if we laugh, right, we release that. And actually it releases tension too. So if you're stressed and you start laughing, it releases attention. Don't forget that next time you're stressed. All right, so this is my list, do not judge but I'm putting myself out there. This is my list of what makes me happy. And these are my to go things so I can laugh out loud. And yes, I need them too. So I need my own list. I do, I, I'll be honest. Um, so number one is spending time with my family. So um, my siblings are very important to me and, um, and we love to laugh together so, and, and talk. So when my husband first came into my clan, um, meaning my, my, my siblings, um, he couldn't understand how after dinner, we could sit out at a table and talk for hours about the silliest things, about politics, about really, I mean, things that we've talked about a hundred times, but we still talk about them and we laugh and, you know, we reminisce. So for hours, so that to me, um, it doesn't matter, you know, what's going on in the world. If we can just connect, um, it just makes me feel good and makes me laugh. And, and we do it through Zoom. Um, and it was funny, we were trying to get my mom on Zoom at the beginning and there was no way she could connect. And she was like, we're trying to do like a whole Zoom, family Zoom. You know, my, I have a brother that lives in Tampa, the other one lives in the Gables and my mom's on the beach. And so we were trying to Zoom and she was frustrated and we're like, okay, FaceTime. And she could have FaceTime. So, but it was hysterical. So we got her, you know, on the phone and now she, now she knows how to do it, but it was hysterical at the beginning. Um, going outside on a sunny day. Um, I love the way the sun feels on my face. In, um, when it's nice and sunny. And as a matter of fact, when it's, you know, like all these days that have been so gloomy, I notice myself, like I don't feel as, as good as I do when it's nice and sunny. 
I love sunny days. I don't like the heat as much, but I love the fact that it's sunny. I always love my windows open. Um, and in fact, you know, when, when, whenever I have an, an office, even my first office at Jackson, I was like, I need a window. <laughs> I don't care what size it is. It could be the size of a shoebox, just a little tiny window where I can see the sun. Um, so that's important to me. Uh, dancing alone in my living room to anything Justin Timberlake. Yes, I'm dating myself. Justin Timberlake is still my man, always will be. Um, and it annoys my sons a lot because I will just turn on, you know, bring your sexy back. I turn it on, they hate it. Um, and that makes me, you know, laugh too, because you know, as parents, we get to annoy our kids. They will have their time to annoy their kids, right? So it's my turn now. Um, and that makes me laugh. So this one, I'm sorry I'm saying this. So just like romance stuff, right? Like being romantic, you know, enjoying, you know, a romantic time. Yes, I did say that. And I'm not gonna say it out loud. Um, okay, watching funny movies. So whenever I'm like in a bad mood or I've had a really tough day at work, again, I'm dating myself, Elf. The first time I saw Elf, I could not stop laughing. And you know that thing that sometimes happens to you that you're thinking whatever the scene is or whatever's funny in your head and you continue to laugh and you can't stop yourself, that's what happens to me with Elf. And it doesn't matter how many times I've seen it, I still crack up. Um, and my cousin Vinny with Joe Pesci, hysterical I can't I saw it the other day again after a long time and I'm like I can't believe I forgot about this movie so every single time uh fresh flowers I love having fresh flowers around the house um even if it's you know two roses three ro whatever it is it's just I walk by them and they just make me happy I'm not sure what that's about but they really make me happy um anything by David Sedaris anything he writes I love so I love to read his stuff um drinking a good glass of red wine um, love. Um, I refuse to waste calories on bad wine. So, so, you know, life is too short. So if only, if it's good, I'll have a drink. If not, I won't. Um, any, okay. So I don't know if you guys know this comedian, Sebastian Manicas. I don't know how to say his name. Maniscalo. Have you ever seen him? Look him up on YouTube. Hysterical. He is so funny. He's, he's Italian American and he does the funniest things. And even, he even does stuff. He posts stuff on Facebook you know, like about his wife, but, you know, opening packets from Amazon and, you know, things. It's hysterical. He's really funny. And my last one um, is just, I love going to museums by myself. Because um, actually my family won't go with me, but um, I love going by myself and just getting lost in the art. Um, I love art and I could be there for hours and hours and hours. Um, we went to, um, to Paris for, for my anniversary a few years back. And I went to the Louvre and I swear, my husband was like, already like, oh, I'm ready to go back to Miami, you know what I mean? Can I have five more hours? <laughs> he was like, see you at the hotel. Um, because I just, I just love it. So that's, those are the things that make me happy. So there you have it, how quirky I am. Please don't tell me, you know, my colleagues that I'm that quirky, I don't care. Um, so these are three things that you can have, give yourself a quick boost if you're ever having a bad day. Um, so write down three positive things that happened during the day. And this is something that I, I use with, with my patients a lot um, because within the day, we can always find something good that happened within it. Even the worst things that happen to us, there's always some, something positive to look for. We just have to learn and to practice to look for it. That's it. it it's practicing like anything else, like riding a bike, like meditating. Um, it's just learning to look for those positive things in the day. So start working on that, just practice. Even if it's a bad day, you know, what's a positive thing that happened today? What could it have been? And start working on that because we have to learn to look for them. Eat dark chocolate. That's an easy one. Having a bad day, a little good dark chocolate, 70% cacao, here we come. Um, and actually, if you really, really wanna do something and make you feel good, really help someone. The power of helping someone makes us feel so good. And it could be the simplest thing. As soon as you do something like, you know, help somebody with a call or if maybe somebody needs, and it could be a simple thing, you know, but always know that if, when you help someone, you're only helping yourself because you are automatically gonna feel better. And now it's your turn. Now you get to write down the 10 things that make you happy. I want you to think about them. I want you to write them down and I want you to enjoy them. And don't forget to find out something good that happened to you in the day. And that's what I got for you. <laughs>